So I'm going to talk about uh, this uh, phase one study of nivolumab, which is one of the anti-PD-1 antibodies in patients with a relapsed refractory classical Hodgkin lymphoma. The background of this briefly is, is that uh, classical Hodgkin lymphoma is a little bit unusual among lymphomas in that under the microscope, the malignant cells, the tumor cells, are rare, the so-called Reed-Sternberg cells, and they're surrounded by an extensive inflammatory infiltrate that doesn't seem able to eradicate the cancer. So uh, people have wondered for a long time how it was that uh, Hodgkin lymphoma could attract such a brisk immune response, and yet that this immune response failed to kill the tumor. And a genetic analysis that were performed a few years ago showed that classical Hodgkin lymphoma frequently has amplification of genetic material at this area on the ninth chromosome called 9P24, and that this amplification mostly results in upregulation, so increased expression of the PD-1 ligands, PD-L1 and PD-L2. So PD-1 uh, sits on the surface of immune cells, most notably T cells, and when it's engaged by its ligands, PD-L1 and PD-L2, uh, this results in a, a downregulation of the immune response. So it, it temporarily shuts down the immune response, and, and all of this together led to the hypothesis that classical Hodgkin lymphoma may have a genetically determined uh, dependence on the PD-1 pathway for survival. Uh, this is unusual in that other tumors that have been targeted with PD-1 blockade don't have the same, gen or the same known genetic abnormality uh, to, to support their dependence on PD-1. So based on this, uh, classical Hodgkin lymphoma was included as an independent expansion cohort in a phase 1b study of nivolumab in patients with relapsed refractory hematologic malignancies. The study schema is shown on this slide. There are 105 patients who were enrolled on the study, and this proceeded through a, a dose escalation phase and a dose expansion phase. And on the dose expansion phase, at a dose of 3 milligram per kilogram of nivolumab, uh, 23 patients with classical Hodgkin lymphoma were treated. The other patients are presented in a separate presentation at this meeting. The primary endpoint of this study was the safety and tolerability of nivolumab, and the secondary endpoint included the overall response, the uh, duration of response, the progression-free survival, and then biomarker assessments. So this slide shows uh, some of the characteristics of the 23 patients who participated in this study. Uh, as you can see, they're relatively young. The median age was 35. And of note, uh, they were quite heavily pretreated. So 78% of the patients had received previously an autologous stem cell transplant and relapsed followed transplantation, and 78% had received pribrentuximab, which we know is one of the most active uh, drugs in Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, the median, so the average number of, of prior lines of therapy was four. And as you can see at the bottom of this slide, about a third of patients had received six or, or more lines of prior therapy. So this is a population of patients that had received extensive pretreatment for their Hodgkin lymphoma, with for many of them very few alternative options available. This slide summarizes the safety uh, data on this study. Uh, without going through all the details, uh, you can see that uh, five patients, so 22% of the total, had a grade three, so a severe related adverse event. Uh, but there were no life-threatening drug-related adverse events and no treatment-related deaths on this study. There are two patients that stopped treatment because of toxicity. One patient who developed myelodysplastic syndrome, uh, who actually had been very heavily uh, pretreated, had received a lot of prior chemotherapy. Uh, so the, the MDS uh, was possibly related to the prior therapy, but because it was diagnosed while the patient was on study, it was attributed as study-related. And then uh, one patient who stopped for uh, pancreatitis. The other drug-related uh, gr uh, grade three adverse events are shown here. Overall, uh, nivolumab has been used in thousands of patients already on clinical trials in solid tumors, and overall, this safety profile uh, mirrors that uh, from what we expected in solid tumor. But the interesting thing about that from our standpoint is that uh, there was no apparent increase in the incidence of lung toxicity, which is something we worried about for those patients because many of them had had radiation or other uh, drugs that can cause lung injury like brentuximab, uh, carmustine, et cetera. Uh, and on this study, there was no there was no apparent increase in, uh, in lung toxicity. So the, the best response uh, achieved by the patients is shown here. And as you can see, among the 23, 20 achieved a response of partial remission or complete remission, which is 87% of the total. Uh, and that included 17 patients, 17% uh, 17 of patients who achieved a complete remission and 70% who achieved a partial remission. 
the other 13% achieved stable disease as their best response. Uh, and for this cohort, the 24-week progression-free survival was 86%. Also shown on this slide are results for three subgroups of interest. The patients that had had a prior autotransplant and had had prior brentuximab. So these are the most uh, heavily pretreated patients uh, and had a response rate of 87%. Uh, patients uh, who did not have, who were not able to get to transplantation, who had uh, three patients only, but all of them responded to drug. And then finally, the patients that had never had brentuximab with a response rate of 80%, and among the four patients, three of them had a complete remission. Uh, this slide, uh, which is a, a little busy, but uh, shows the response duration uh, for the 20 patients who achieved a partial or complete remission. And the, the salient points that I would make is that most of the responses, 60% of the responses occurred within eight weeks of starting study treatment. And at the time of database lock, which was in June of this year, 48% uh, of the responses are ongoing. 43% of the patients, so 10 out of the 23, are still on treatment at the time of uh, uh, database lock. Uh, and there are patients now that have been in remission for over a year. This slide summarizes the results of the correlative study. So we were able to obtain 10 tumors from patients who enrolled on the study and study them with a number of, of techniques to try to get at the, the biology that underlies the clinical responses. And as you can see, all 10 tumors had the genetic amplification at 9P24, which is what we thought formed the basis for uh, vulnerability to this type of treatment. And all tumors in the malignant cells in the Hodgkin-Reed-Sternberg Hodgkin cell, or HRS, had uh, increased expression on the cell surface of the PD-1 ligands, PD-L1, PD-L2, uh, and phosphostat-3, which, which is a, 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 a pathway that leads to further PD-L1 expression. So what, what we conclude at this point from the study is that nivolumab can be safely administered to patients with relapsed refractory classical Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, that this results uh, in these uh, preliminary results in a response rate of 87%, uh, which is quite high for a group of patients who were very heavily pretreated. All the tumors that we were able to study harbored genetic abnormalities in 9P24, uh, leading to overexpression of the PD-1 ligands. And this uh, supports the hypothesis that classical Hodgkin lymphoma is a tumor with a genetic determin genetically determined vulnerability to PD-1 blockade. Uh, we hope that uh, PD-1 blockade in the future can become an important part of the treatment for patients with uh, classical Hodgkin lymphoma. Thank you very much.